Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about the NASP practice model. In recent years, describing the role of a school psychologist has become complicated. School psychologists are trained in a wide range of areas including school law, mental health, child development, behavior and academic interventions, and much more. To further complicate things, school psychologists fill many different roles in their districts. In some districts, school psychologists engage mostly in, in assessment. In others, school psychologists play more of a mental health role. In others, these roles are blended. In order to help clarify what school psychologists should be trained in and the roles they are qualified to fill, NASP developed the Model for Comprehensive and Integrated School Psychological Services. This is known as the NASP Practice Model. The NASP Practice Model includes 10 domains of practice that are organized into three areas as seen here. When talking about the NASP Practice Model, Stacy Stalski uses a house analogy to describe each section. I like this analogy as it helps provide context for each domain helps demonstrate how each domain interacts with other domains and serves as a mnemonic strategy to help remember the domains. It also serves as a great narrative to connect people to the model. As with any house, we start with the foundation. The foundation is what all other components of the house are built upon. A solid foundation ensures that the house will be stable and long-lasting. In the practice model, our foundation includes diversity and development and learning, research and program evaluation, and legal, ethical, and professional practice. Having a good understanding of differences in development and learning ensures that decisions are made relevant to those for whom the decisions are made. Knowledge about research and program evaluation enables you to make decisions that will create change you hope to achieve and allows you to identify if the changes are being effective. Legal, ethical, and professional standards protect the profession, ensure public trust, and ensure the rights of students and parents are safeguarded. Without this foundation, the rest of the house is at risk. On top of the foundation are the rooms of the house. Rooms serve different purposes and affect different people. For example, bedrooms are usually used by one or two people. If something happens in these rooms, it usually only affects the people who use the room and not everyone in the house. In the NASP practice model, student level, level services are these bedrooms. Whether we are developing interventions or services to promote academic skills or social and life skills, these services are targeted at a single student. They are individualized to meet the needs of this student. Changes, successes, and difficulties within this plan affect only the targeted student and are independent of other students. Houses also contain common rooms such as kitchen, living room, and dining room. These rooms are used by the whole family. Changes to these rooms affect everyone in the house. In the NAS practice model, system level services are the common rooms. School-wide preventive and responsive services and family school collaboration all occur at the macro level and affect multiple students. Whether you are helping to, de to develop a class-wide behavior management plan, helping in, organ helping in MTSS screening and intervention planning, or organizing a parent training, you are affecting a large group of students. Decision decisions made in these areas will affect many people. The rooms in your house serve several functions and allow you to do many things, but these rooms are made more effective by the utilities that run through them. The kitchen is more effective with gas to the stove, electricity to the refrigerator, and water to the sink. Bedrooms are more useful with electricity, allowing us to see and wake up on time. Utilities increase the capacity of this system. For example, you can make supper in a kitchen without utilities, but it is going to be more work and the quality will likely be affected. In the practice model, database decision making, consultation, and collaboration are utilities that allow full use of our rooms. You can develop interventions, plan instruction, and make system level decisions without these utilities, but the work done will not be of the same quality as if these utilities are used. Data ensures decisions are made with context in mind and allows us to monitor its overall effectiveness. Consultation and collaboration allows us to take input from stakeholders and make decisions that will best fit in the current system and will be more likely to be implemented with fidelity. The 10 domains 
just discussed are the aspects of the practice model that relate to the individual school psychologist. The practice model also contains six organizational principles that indicate what organizations employ school employing school psychologists should do to ensure effective use of school psychologists. I recently attended a training by Dan Heisen where he referred to these organizational principles as the neighborhood in which the house is located. If a house has a good foundation, has the necessary utilities, and has adequate rooms for your needs, then the inhabitants of the house are going to be happier, healthier, and safer than if these elements are not in place. However, the inhabitants and the quality of these elements are affected by more than just the house itself. A house is always affected by the neighborhood that surrounds it. If a neighborhood is supportive and safe, the home will function better than if not. Again, in the practice model, the organizational principles serve as this neighborhood. A school psychologist going to be more effective in an organization that uses a continuum of services to ensure that the needs of consumers are met in an organization with a professional climate that allows school psychologists to advocate for needed services, one in which there are physical, personnel, and fiscal systems that allow for training, resources, and adequate numbers of school psychologists, where there exists positive proactive communication at all levels, in an organization that provides appropriate supervision to ensure effective services, and where professional development plans are relevant to the needs of the school and school psychologists. A neighborhood such as this would allow school psychologists to work within the practice model and create better outcomes for kids. In summary, that is the NASP, NASP practice model, using the house analogy. A solid foundation is needed to ensure the rooms are stable and reliable. Utilities add value and capacity to the rooms, and the neighborhood allows the house to develop appropriately. So take care of your home and do what you can to strengthen your neighborhood. It matters for kids in schools.